Welcome back to Five on the Floor. I'm your host, Greg Sylvander. Today, tonight, whenever you're listening to this, the floor plan, uh, we are going to unpack the Pat Riley press conference. Uh, this is an annual event in Miami Heat world. Uh, whenever Pat Riley speaks to the media, it generally is maybe two times a year, if we're lucky three, uh, usually before the season starts, after any major acquisition, and then the, the postseason wrap up. And, um, and these have been historic in a lot of ways as we go through them. Uh, I am your host, Greg Sylvander, but with me uh, to unpack this is Alex T Toledo, who uh, was there at the event, as was Brady Hawk. You can follow both of them at Tropical Blanket at Brady Hawk 305, respectively. Uh, so they were at the presser. I was on the Zoom call, uh, took over the Five Reason Sports account. Ethan's out of pocket. All good. Have fun. Enjoy your time off, Ethan. Uh, but, you know, the Riley presser is kind of like a um, it's an event for Heat fans because I think it it gives you an idea of where the franchise is, is uh, leaning uh, on a macro scale. Sometimes things that he takes and says are taken out of context and taken too literal. I think sometimes he's just playing around. But today I thought we got some really valuable insights. There were a few things that I really wanted to touch on throughout this. We're going to go through some key comments I think he made and what I think they mean and what we think they mean. But also... Um, just our overall takeaways. I, I, I'm particularly interested to pick Alex and Brady's brain since they were there just to get Riley's vibe. Um, you know, since they were in the building, it's different than when you're seeing it over zoom or on TV. But so here we are, gentlemen, uh, the Riley presser. Uh, we're, we're not going to beat around the bush here. We're, I'm going straight to the stuff that I think all heat fans are thinking about. And that's Tyler hero. Uh, the question was asked about Tyler Hero's season, about what's next for Tyler Hero, and I thought a really interesting comment was made. Uh, so let's just start there. Pat, obviously, uh, Tyler had a fantastic uh, season, winning sixth man of the year. Curious what you thought of his postseason before the injury, and he said last week that he does want to start next season. What does he have to do to kind of solidify that for the next part of his career? Well, I think his numbers speak for, you know, him. And in his game, you know, averaging 20 a game and, you know, really shooting the ball well, uh, developing a game that, that at times during the regular seasons, unstoppable for him, for him to try to find a shot. He can find and create his own shots in a lot of different situations. So he's, I don't even think he's here yet, you know, really here yet as a, as a full-time complete, uh, Player, and I say that about a player that averaged 20 and shot 37, 38% from three, can score in bunches, can score at the rim, can score on floaters, can score on pull-ups, can score on threes. You know, I mean, he gets out on the break um, and he's 22. He's 21, 22 years old. So, uh, you know, the next step for him, and I think we're seeing this in, in the league, if you want to win a championship and – and you want to be a starter, uh, you really have to become a two-way player today. And you have to improve in certain areas of your game. Now, we all know that at one time or another, you know, that, you know, teams will always put a target on Tyler's back or Duncan's back or Max's back or somebody else that they think they can beat one-on-one -on, -one on a switch. And so I saw improvement in his defense this year. He's got a great feet he's got quick feet and he just needs to get stronger again you know and you know another 10 pounds of, of muscle mass and, and and he just needs to get stronger from a leverage standpoint because i think he's he still has a lot to the upside but as far as being a starter come to training camp and win it whoa there's a lot there. So much. I love that. Um, where the heck do we start, y'all? Uh, I've already talked too much. Alex, what, what do you take away from that Tyler Hero um, comment from, from Pat? What was the thing that jumped out at you most? It's actually hard to say because, like you said, there's so much that he said there. Like, it's a lot to unpack because he does sound like a guy who believes in Tyler Hero. Like, I think he was kind of pointing to the regular season, quote unquote, dominance. Is that was is that one of the words he used there? Yeah, you know, like unstoppable. To, yes, unstoppable. That was the one. 
being unstoppable and then saying that, you know, for the regular season, I thought was very interesting. And I, I talked with Brady about this after we were, you know, walking out of there that he's still very, you know, he's on top of his game when it comes to choosing his words and choosing how he answers to a question right on the spot. Like he's still very sharp when it comes to that. And, and uh, you know, you could tell that Spo is a student of Riley when it comes to how they handle press conferences, except Riley is just like, you know, so damn charismatic. It's I've never uh, covered a, this presidential state of the union press conference that, that he does every year. I only, I got to cover him when Jimmy uh, was first brought onto the scene and they did that whole thing. So that was cool. But seeing him in his element was great. And I thought the Tyler stuff was, you know, kind of the best way of him being in his element, right? Because there's, there was a lot to say there. He kind of was talking positively about him, but also challenged him to get stronger again, because I think he did something similar um, last year. And then, like, on top of that, it was just like, well, if you're going to be a starter, go to training camp and win it. And that's always been their thing. That's something that they've always been consistent with as far as I've been uh, following the team. And so it's just kind of more of the same from Riley. I think it's he he hit on everything there where it's like, you know, we believe in you, but you got to be better on defense. You got to improve certain things. While also saying, you know, he got better on defense this year. He has quick feet. So it's like a little bit of the the, the back and forth. He's giving you a little bit of everything. So I just think, you know, Riley w- was uh, – I think he addressed that one pretty expertly. Yeah. So Brady, I want to hone in on something specifically with you um, because it's interesting to manage from a basketball perspective. Um, Like this is what he came out and said just now. If you want to win and be a starter, which means like essentially if you want to close games on a winning team, on a championship team, you have to be a two-way player. He just came out. That was a declaration made by Pat Riley today. Today, Tyler Hero is not thought of as a two-way player. He has a ways to go. And uh, Riley alluded to the things he does well. But I think we all know he also talked about hunting, like getting hunted. He talked about other guys getting hunted, but Tyler got hunted. This, to me, felt like Riley saying, right now, Tyler ain't that guy. He's not that um, he's not that two way player that they can count on late in a playoff run. And to me, that is jarring. It's telling. It may just be that it's at 22. That's what he is. Brady, talk me off the ledge here, because to me, like this opened up, it changed my philosophy in terms of where I think they may head this off season. And we're going to talk a lot about that in future episodes, but from your perspective, just basketball wise, like how does Tyler respond to getting in the two way player conversation enough? Cause that's essentially the bar that's been set for him to become part of the closing group per se. Right. Yeah, definitely. I think for one, I'll say you guys were talking yesterday about like the themes of a Pat Riley presser, like something he comes into and he wants to get across defense was what he wanted to get across fully. It didn't matter what player it was. He went on a rant when he didn't even answer the question that was asked. He just went on a defensive rant to talk about the defense in this league and wanting to be up at par on that end of the floor. And you need to play well, that it cuts back to the thing you just said. I thought the most important thing from what he talked about with Tyler was that one line where he said, exactly. If you want to win a championship and you want to be a starter, you have to become a two-way player today. And it's like, that's where his head's at. And I think that's where they are as a team. Uh, In terms of Tyler, how he gets there, I don't think he can. (laughs) Like, I I think he can improve defensively, but he's not going to be a two-way stopper. Like, that's not who he is. Uh, And I, firmly, I don't think he needs to be. Like, he just has to be good enough, like, in a lot of ways. Just the question is, can he uphold the offense in the playoffs to allow it? Because if he's having his regular season averages into the postseason, we're not talking about this to the same degree. Pat Riley's probably not harping on Tyler Hero's defense as much if he had that. Like, that's where it comes down to because he went on and on about how he could score at every level and tough shot making and impossible to guard and all that other stuff. Like, if he has exactly that description, then it's not as important. But when you're kind of declining in a lot of ways offensively, when, when teams try to break you up and all of a sudden you're being attacked in the other end, I think that's where it cuts in. But in terms of Pat Riley, like, that does say a lot, I feel like, in terms of team building. Like, I know not to cut over to a certain player, but a lot of people would talk about Donovan Mitchell and him not being able to defend. Like they're, they're, That seems a little odd to me because Donovan Mitchell 
can score the basketball in the half court at an incredibly high level that we've seen. So it's a little different. So I guess that's the way you outweigh that is just being absolutely dominant on the other end. Like Bam, the reason we defend on this podcast Bam all the time is because when he's not aggressive offensively, he's probably the best defender in the league. So if you're that great on one end, you can kind of outweigh the other end. So, uh, but it did say a lot, just the fact that power alley was just continually harping on defense in a way where he even went on the part of a rant where he said, he hates hearing that the team shot well, and that's why they lost in the playoffs. Like, that's not why they, they, that happened. It's just solely on defense because that's the team they are. Like if that, those statements tell you exactly where he is in terms of team building and where he wants his team to go, I guess, coaching wise and playing wise. You hit on it with guys like Donovan Mitchell and there's others. Um, If you, if all of the things that Riley described about Tyler hero that we saw glimpses of with the unstoppable moves and all that, if all, if all that were occurring late in the playoffs, this particular season, then we wouldn't be talking about Jimmy needing help. And we wouldn't be talking about the, he would be playing in the finals. So like that stuff didn't occur in the high leverage situations. So as much as Tyler hero showed those things, like he hasn't showed them on that stage yet. And so that's where I just think if you're not going to be doing those types of things, then you better damn guard your yard. You know what I mean? And I thought that that was an, a, an interesting thing that, that Riley really brought to the forefront here because uh, Tyler hero has every right to say, I want to be a starter, his stats traject start, starter and um and that conversation inevitably is going to come up and i I just it's going to make it interesting to watch them juggle that Um, before we go into the next player because there's a couple others that are going to be really fun to talk about uh from this pat riley presser when i tell you about a great sponsor of the five reason sports network and that is prize picks they are the daily fantasy partner of five reason sports network you can check them out at prizepicks.com or download the app It is super easy. We're talking daily fantasy, the easiest and fastest way to play. You pick over and under on player props to win up to 10 times your cash. It is as easy as picking your favorite players, choosing statistics to go over and under. You get big payouts, win up to 10 times your cash on a single entry and added and you can get added to uh, the 300 million that they've paid out at prize picks so far. They have 24 seven live support, fast and secure withdrawals. Uh, you can go to their website, read the testimonials. It is my favorite daily fantasy app. Here's the key, y'all. Use the code five F I V E. That'll double your initial deposit up to a hundred dollars. Uh, so make sure you use that code. That'll get you hooked up. Check it out. Daily fantasy made easy Prizepicks.com. All right. So that was the Tyler hero stuff. We're going to let everyone come back to uh, how they feel if they missed a thought. So don't worry, folks, if we didn't touch on something that you think we should have, uh, we're going to get some stream of consciousness moments later in the pod. Uh, but now we're going to flip the script and talk about a guy that I think this brought up the most attention. Um, I was surprised at the way um, I'm just going to go ahead and say it for those who are not on social media. Uh, bless you and bless your peace and sanity. Um, but Raptors Twitter really came after Pat Riley today about comments that he made challenging Kyle Lowry and his conditioning. Uh, if you went back and read uh, or listen to uh, all the way back to our game five post game pod. Um, and then also on our preview pod, I suggest everyone check it out uh, because I correctly said that this was going to be something that was brought up. Uh, so I, I'm going to victory lap there. Let's listen to Pat Riley discuss Kyle Lowry this season. Uh, and uh, kind of we'll, we'll go from there. Who spoke to us as a player gets older, his conditioning has to get even better to keep up with that. Um, Kyle Lowry this season, when you look at him as a 36 year old player going on 37, where he stands conditioning wise, what he looked like at the end of the season, how much of a priority is that for you to, Do what you've done with a bunch of your older players and maybe be a little bit more demanding as a player ages into that. You know, Kyle had uh, a challenging year for a lot of reasons, and uh, I don't have to get into them. They're personal or or other things, but he had a challenging year with the move and and, and everything uh, earlier in the season with – he had some injuries, missed some time, and then there were some personal issues. But – Look, okay. the, the bottom line with me and for me, uh, as far as uh, hoping that you can get the most out of a player, I don't have to go back and, and talk about it, is that you got to be in world-class shape. 
just have to be. And, and uh, that is something as you get older, there's a point of diminishing returns as you get a little bit older, that when you're younger, you can, you know, you can do things in spite of that. But uh, I'm not saying that when he was younger, he wasn't in the kind of condition that he was in this year, but he definitely is going to have to address that and uh, it will be addressed. And to get to what the perfect, you know, overall conditioning for him to be successful because he plays the game, you know, in a manner where he needs his strength and his size, you know, he's, uh, he's not, you know, he's not Tyler hero. He's, he's not that lean kind of guy, but, but I think he can be in better shape. And, you know, and I do believe that the pain of, of losing and the reminders that you send out about this, uh, you know, might change his mind a little bit, but I do think that, uh, that he can be in better shape next year and, you know, we'll address it and we'll try to help him as best as we can, because it's not easy when you get a little bit older. So, uh, but contrary to what he says, I don't think it was a wasted year. You know, he said it was a wasted year. I mean, uh, I've had that feeling myself as a coach, you know, when you've done as much as you can do and then you just sort of like, you know, I mean, it was championship or bust for, for Kyle. You came here with that notion and he's very, very disappointed uh, in uh, the fact that we, we couldn't get to the finals and win it. So he'll do whatever he has to do. I think Iron. Hard call out season. Tyler Hero on the two-way stuff. Kyle Lowry on the conditioning stuff. Um, this is interesting. I'm just going to I'm gonna tee this up, and then I want, uh, I'm want i going to go to Brady first here. Uh, just because I went to Alex first last time. I'm not playing favorites. I'm trying to break it up and give usage evenly amongst the team. That's what a point guard does. Uh, Kyle Lowry has came to Miami on Kyle Lowry's terms. I've said that to you guys before. Um, not to delve into things in a dramatic fashion, but I'll just say that I think that the organization has made a significant number of concessions to make sure that Kyle Lowry is happy. Um, and, uh, and it comes with the territory of also the Jimmy Butler build, which Pat Riley talked about today and trusting in Jimmy Butler and uh, Kyle Lowry, um, you know, has been great in Miami but there weren't a hundred percent things um, that I would say were bought into. And I don't think that anybody is surprised by any of that for Riley to come out so strongly talking about the conditioning and talking about um, him saying things like, maybe if you write about this, he'll hear about it and um, you know, we'll address that and that kind of stuff to me. Like, if someone else has to write about it for him to hear about it, that means he ain't hearing about it from you as much. So like, how is that communication happening to me? It felt like that if there was ever a point where you felt like there could be a little bit of maybe a difference in opinion is Kyle Lowry going to be open-minded to the stringent rules. Cause it's kind of like this y'all. And now I'm gonna hand the mic over. We did it your way. You came here and we did it your way. Now we're going to do it our way. That's the vibe I got. Brady, tell me how you felt about what he mentioned about Kyle, how you feel maybe they could best manage Kyle going forward. Um, but this also, and then I'm going to close here, it changed my opinion on, on the viability of Kyle Lowry being included in trades this summer. I'll say that guys like Pat Riley can have a talk or have a word in a certain player's development where they say you need to improve in this area. That's what they do with all the young guys. I don't think it's crazy for the team's president to say that a certain guy needs to get in a certain shape that they always hold that type of standard throughout the entire organization for years and years and years. Um, I think the line that stood out for me was that he said, he's definitely going to have to address that and it will be addressed. Like this isn't like it's better for him long-term or it's better for him heading into the postseason, like, no, this is going to be something that's addressed because they need him healthy for the playoffs. They need him playing at a high level in the real season that he kind of threw out there. Uh, and the only way to play well and get to the real season and play well is to be, I guess, in good shape and in good condition uh, to last by getting there. I'll say in terms of uh, 
people talking about Pat Riley kind of going at Kyle Lowry in a, in a weird way, like Toronto fans maybe taking offense to that. Like, I don't know how that's the takeaway there. Like, I can't really see that. Like, we've been kind of teeing this up, I guess, to expect this type of thing. But he couldn't have said it in a better way possible. Like, he teed it up saying all the stuff he did in the regular season of – kind of how helpful he was, the stuff he went through personally. He went from all the way through all of that stuff and then made his way to throwing that in, but also throwing it at the end. We're going to help him get through yeah. that. We're still going to – like, Thank there was you. nothing extra to that. It was so uh, supportive. I felt so different than – there was a narrative on Twitter. I don't mean to interrupt, but I just want to dive in quickly on the Raptors Twitter thing I mentioned earlier because people will say, why the hell did he mention that and then never – address it again they talked as if riley was very critical of kyle and some people even said that it was um like uh i i don't even know what the right implied that it was like gross yeah like gross like lacking humanity um or lacking like compassion I, i i that's the best way i could articulate it in this moment and for me i felt like he actually kind of said like we're gonna help you get there and you'll have all the tools at your disposal to get where you need to get. So I took it totally differently than others. It was a hard call out, but not without support. Anyway, Brady, back to you. Sorry. And I'll add that this isn't like somebody in the public that's saying this about Kyle Lowry. Like this is his player. Like this is somebody on his team. Like I think of like if a person in school has bad grades, the principals allow it to say and make a tweak on that. Like that's what this is. He's the president allowed to make that uh, assumption, but Back to the way it impacts Kyle, I guess. It's just, uh, I think this is necessary. He said it, it's that you have to be in world-class shape. You just have to be. Uh, and I think on a specifically a Heat team that revolves around, for one, Kyle's the one guy on this team that pushes pace. And you look at the way they run offensive, constant movement. You look at the way they're constantly switching defensively. Like everything about this team just revolves around being in good shape. And I look at and watch the Warriors play, not to go too far in another direction. But the way they play of constantly moving, it's like that's the outlook of, of a best-case scenario of a Miami offense, like nonstop moving. You have to have a certain number of shooters, I guess, to fully maximize that. But the only way to do that is to have a point guard that can move in that way and get you to the promised land in the real season, in the postseason. So uh, I don't think I had a – I didn't have a problem with anything he said about that. I actually thought he articulated it really well. Uh, but I think it's kind of expected. I think you just – you said it really well, Greg, that – they've kind of bended for him in a lot of ways that now the one thing they're going to ask is just get to the certain level of shape, I guess, for their uh, team and organization. And to be honest, I don't think he's going to have a problem with that. Like I, I really believe that the statements that they've thrown out there, like Spo saying he's going to come back in the greatest shape of his career. I don't know about to that degree, but I really do believe he does come back in really good shape. Like I can't see Kyle Lowry with the, the career he's had and the player he is and the person he is. I see this as kind of like a motivation thing where he does do just that because he knows as well that he needs this for his body and his condition. Alex, do you agree? Is he open-minded to this? Oh yeah. I I do think he's open-minded to this. Like I said on the, on the last podcast, I think like, I think this is something players know about throughout the league. And it's been said multiple times by players, right? Like I think people know the deal when it comes to the Miami heat and like you guys, I mean, like you said, he came here on his terms. Right. And, and, I, I think it's not like, you know, he came out of shape or anything like that. I'm, you know, I'm sure he passed everything they they expected of him uh, around that time. But I'm thinking now from what they were saying, even though it was uh, a hard call out, it was kind of soft because like, uh, you know, it was a lot of going back and forth as far as, um, you know, giving him his proper due for the regular season. And I'm not saying soft in a derogatory way. I'm saying soft in the sense that he gave, they gave him his due. They gave him his credit. They wanted, you know, to show the proper amount of respect to the work that he did throughout the regular season and then went into like, you know, well, uh, getting to this point in your career, we've seen it before. Uh, This is when guys got to be in the tip top shape. If you want to, you know, really contend for a title, he's a starter and he's going to be a huge part of this going forward, whether he fans like it or not. Right. And I think that's. I I'm not sure about that statement that you made earlier about the viability of him getting traded. Nothing of. uh, Nothing I thought of him um, change as far as uh, his offseason outlook. I'm more interested uh, to hear what you think of that. But as far as him being on the heat next season and going forward, he absolutely has got to be in great shape because, like you guys already went into, they move a lot on both ends. And 
the the best version of themselves, like Brady said, is them moving around a lot. So I do think Kyle's going to come back in good good enough shape, and I think he's going to have a nice uh, comeback here. I just think you need it to be the inverse of what happened this season, right, where he had such a strong regular season, and in the playoffs was the opposite, had um, the injury hit at a bad time. And I think you might see some of that load management stuff for him next season, right, where, like, maybe – that's a, a way where you can manage a, a guy's minutes like that. Like we know that, you know, they got to 55 wins in the one seed with guys going in and out of the lineup throughout the regular season. So I think they're going to have a certain uh, level of confidence, no matter what happens this off season, uh, that they're, that they're going to be able to do things like that with Kyle Lowry. So I don't know. I think it was, a uh, again, Pat Riley kind of towing that line and, and, and showing that balance of the way that you're supposed to talk about a guy. I didn't think it was disrespectful at all. So let me clarify so that I don't get aggregated in the wrong sense about Kyle Lowry's viability of be, uh, being traded. This is all I mean is that when Riley so strongly draws a line in the sand related to conditioning, if the same, um, if they're not aligned on that front, it opens up the door for a transaction just straight up. So like that was just me assessing that particular aspect of it is that there has now been, I think, an, an expectation established that um, I, to your, to all your guys point and to Riley's point, I agree with, I think Kyle will, will respond to it. And actually if Kyle Lowry comes in in a certain level of shape and still has uh, the acreage that you've talked about, Alex, like there is um, there's something about a, a bounce back kind of season from him that I, I like the idea of, frankly, if he's in world-class shape, but if he, the only reason I said that is that if he were to not be as open-minded to that, I just don't know how you move forward with that situation. Uh, Cause I just think that it would become a tenuous one. So let's just clear that up so that there's no aggregating disasters. And as I mentioned, disasters, are you a South Florida property owner with an insurance claim? Are you dealing with water mold or fire damage looking for a reputable, fully licensed, insured and certified contractor? Water Cleanup of Florida is here for you 24 hours a day. When a disaster strikes in your home or business, you need specialized, fast and reliable services. Water Cleanup of Florida understands the impact and stress an unexpected disaster may cause. With over 60 years of combined experience, Michael, Robert, and their team is prepared to handle any size disaster. The guys are third generation contractors in South Florida, so continuing to maintain their sterling reputation is extremely important to them. Their objective is to make the cleanup and insurance claim process painless and hassle free. Free. Water Cleanup of Florida is also a licensed building contractor, so they provide the A to Z service, one-stop shopping that busy homeowners and business owners require. There is no need to bring in other contractors. They'll handle it all for you. Call Michael anytime on his personal cell. That's 954-579-0356. Water Cleanup of Florida. Again, call Michael, 954-579-0356. If you got the schmutz, they got the guts. So um, this was the other thing that I thought uh, that we should address um, because Barry came straight out and asked a question that I think all Heat fans are, are thinking about. Um, so I'm, we're going to sneak this one in and get some final takeaways and get out of here. But this was something else that I thought was a major takeaway from, from Riley's presser today. I ask you this knowing that you had a very good season, knowing you were one of the final three teams standing and knowing that Boston had, had an excellent defense. That said, were there ever any times in that series or during the playoffs, Pat, where you said to yourself, we need to get Jimmy another big time scorer to play with him to make things easier for our half court offense and for Jimmy? Yeah. Well, I, th I think that's a valid question, you know, uh, and I think it's almost maybe a consensus around, uh, you know, the league, you know, by people who know what they're talking about, who study the league and, 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 and know what it takes to really be successful, you know, from that standpoint. So, um, you know, as I said earlier uh, about that, you know, Jimmy, uh, you know, has a very unique game, uh, not having Tyler, you know, just having Tyler at his best, you know, which could always, you know, they could work off of one another and they can play together. But, uh, and, and that's for, you know, you know, going back to Iris question about, uh, about BAM, maybe this is where internally now it's time to, 
to go in that direction with more responsibility. Now, if there's something from outside that avails itself that doesn't cost us an arm and a leg that that could fit that that bill, then I'd always be interested in looking at that. But but uh, I think we have what we need internally, but we'll, we'll see, you know, from that standpoint. Alex, what do you think? What, what I think is he just so gracefully put it, uh, could go either way. <laughs> Shout out to the <laughs> podcast. Yeah. But that's really what he's saying there because I do th- – and he said this uh, other times throughout the, the press conference that, you know, he he thinks that the team that they have, if they were to bring it back, it would be – you know, it's, it's, good, it's good enough to win that he really believed that they had enough to win and get to the finals. It obviously didn't happen that way and – while also at the at the in the same breath saying we'll see right like if something comes up he said it like three three times right like if a guy is out there throw throw him to me or whatever that quote was right <laughs> so he has always said a different version of this in all of these presidential state of the union pressers where it's like yeah we uh, we love and believe in our guys still developing them but if something comes across that is very interesting to us or you know is an opportunity that you can't pass up on. They're going to do their best to get in there. And I think that's something that's always been known. I think that, uh, you know, Heat fans don't got to panic when it comes to this stuff, man. And I know sometimes we come across as like shows for the organization, but it's like they keep coming through. right? Like it's the results. I think people, you know, get tied up in all the times that they didn't get guys. And it's like, wait, how how many times have they uh, had a build that's built, you know, uh, around guys that they acquired and, and it's how many different bills have there been in your life that have been successful. Right. And I think it's almost like uh, things keep happening. Right. And whether, whether or not they land uh, another star player in this summer or, you know, next season or whatever um, I think they've already proven themselves. And it's kind of like a, you know, you give them the benefit of the doubt that they're going to be able to figure things out, whether it's with the internal improvement, whether it's with, uh, you know, making the best upgrades to the team that, that are available out there. Like I'm, we know how they are, man. <laughs> we know how they are. Like, it really could go either way, though. And I think that's why Pat was kind of implying, well, uh, nothing is really out there yet, right? Like, I don't think that opportunity has it has presented itself yet, even though there's a lot of names that people want to throw out, even though the Donovan Mitchell stuff has been heating up in, the, in public. That stuff feels more like, you know, the the pregame to the the actual event, right? Like, it is, it's, it's like the, the smoke leading to the fire. Like, I don't, I don't think they're in that situation yet where Donovan is actually asking out or any situation like that. It doesn't sound like it. So I don't know. I think he did a good job once again of, of finding that balance of what to say here, because really it's like, you're the president of that team. I, I think you you gotta, you gotta be careful what you say. Like I said, because he only speaks once or twice a year. And it's like, even though he's Pat Riley, you can't come across like talking about guys, like they don't matter. And I think he does a great job of not doing that, right. Of, of talking about guys, like, you know, they're really invested in them. They really care about them. And, and he, sh- he gives them the proper respect while also saying, well, we're always looking to upgrade the team and it's all about winning and winning your misery. Right. And I think that's why he said, like uh, we talked about earlier, the, it wasn't a wasted year. And I understand how Kyle feels. It's that winning your misery stuff. And I think that's kind of the, the, the through line here because it's always, about winning so they will try to upgrade the team no guarantees though could go either way uh yep just like they said uh brady i'm interested to pick your brain on internal improvement that he talked about with bam earlier um and also uh in that quote that we just listened to he he kind of uh first he said it's consensus that jimmy needs help and they need another frontline score and that anyone who was analyzing this that knew anything all the smart people or something he said like that were saying that it's essentially consensus that they do need that. And then he kind of snuck in there. If Tyler was just healthy, like, gosh, they'd love to have that 21 points a game. How do you absorb that little element there where he's kind of like sneaking in Tyler, but also kind of acknowledging that they didn't have what they needed there to close. Um, And then the internal improvement could have come from Bam. Like how should we absorb that kind of stuff from Pat and from your perspective? Yeah, the biggest thing is that element that I took away is the BAM thing. Like, he really snuck that in there where he said – we Alex kept talking about the balance. Like, he kept balancing out saying, you know, if they run it back, they're comfortable with this team. But, hey, if somebody presents themselves, like, we're not, we're not against it. 
But when he threw in the fact that he went back to another question and said, back to when I was talking about Bam, maybe this is where internally it's time to go in that direction with more responsibility. Meaning if they don't get another star, if that star doesn't present themselves and they have to run it back with this top tier core, Bam Adebayo needs to have more responsibility as an offensive player. And that's something he's talked about in past press pressers. He talked about it a little bit in this one where he was talking about him as a shooter, getting up to 15 you know, attempts a game in that range. But I think that was kind of my takeaway there was that he just was trying to challenge him in a way that let's just say that they don't get that. They're going to need it internally in some way. And that development could be Tyler, obviously, because he's going to get shots up anyway, but they're going to need Bam to take that next step if that's where they're going to get. But there were a couple of words that he used before that when talking about some of this topic where he, he used the word proactive, like the, those little words where he's like, you have to be very proactive and looking how you're going to improve where he threw in, we will look, we will explore. We always do this, like that type of stuff. It was just like, they're really going to look into this. And I think it is also funny how he really laid the groundwork in terms of if the trade does present itself and there has to be, I know we see all the mock trades and everything. He kept throwing in there that, they're not giving the whole farm. Like we're, we're not going to give an arm and a leg. Not desperate. Like, yeah, they're not desperate and they're not going to give everything away. Like he's just making sure you know that he'll have the upper hand on a lot of this. Like you're not going to be dictating these trades and everything. And that's what it felt like to me. Like the, one of the biggest things from this is that talking about, you know, if there's one out there, throw them to me, or we're always going to try to improve the team. Like, yeah, we, we pretty much know that, but just hearing him really throw out like, undercover trade ideas in terms of he's not going to give everything away is just hilarious because if you're on social media as of late, you see the, the Donovan Mitchell fake trades when it's the whole entire heat roster in the trade or something like that. So like, it's just funny to hear that from him, but uh, I think you are confident in terms of if that star does come available, they are really going to go after that. Like they are not going to sit back and allow that to happen and say, Yes, he kept saying, like, they, they're, if they ran it back, they know how good of a team they have. They, he took this loss really hard because he knows this is a championship-type team. But the fact is, we've heard it over and over, I guess, over the years of Pat Riley pressers that you can always improve. And I think they know that. Uh, but there was just some of those little words and things thrown in that I feel like stands out more than, like, the big picture. Alex, final thoughts? Um, anything we didn't touch on? Uh, obviously the comments just related to, um, to internal improvement. I know we've kind of talked, talked a lot about that stuff. I, I do want to sneak in, had a hilarious comment about running it back with his wife every week and that that seems to work out well. I wish I would have queued that one up because that was really good stuff about running it back. And it's funny that Anthony Chang had the gall to ask him directly about the term run it back because that's very much like I feel like a heat Twitter social media thing. Uh, is the team going to run it back? But it's it's transcending uh, Twitter now. That was funny. I thought that his praise of PJ Tucker shows that, listen, y'all, whatever the hell they need to do to uh, make sure he's in a heat uniform next year, they're going to do. And if it's something that uh, requires them to use a spending mechanism that you wish they could have spent it on someone else, sorry about your bad luck. Uh, PJ Tucker is going to find a way to be back. Those were some of the things I wanted to take away. Alex, um, and Brady, too, if anything comes to your mind, uh, any final thoughts before we wrap? I mean, look, I you know me from everything we've talked about over the past couple of seasons. I, you know, I may as well have done a fist bump like when Pat started talking about BAM and, and, and reemphasizing getting BAM the attempts. And, and specifically when he said, oh, he can be very prolific at, at times, but it can always be effort on running, on lob dunks, on little floaters. <laughs> it made me laugh that he said little floaters. <laughs> He's been listening to you. Yeah, no, that's hilarious. Uh, I hope not. I hope not, because then I'm going to start, uh, you know, folding under pressure here. But really, uh, I do think like that BAM stuff is huge. And it's and it shows the expectation that I think Pat has for BAM in the sense that, oh, this guy can be more. And he said something similar last uh, the last time he did this. So it's always good to hear him talk about that. I think the Duncan stuff, I, I, I it was interesting that, you know, again, with the balance stuff, like, like I've been talking about the whole show, but um, it's interesting that most of the stuff he said with Duncan was more about improvement, right? Like it was more like, a, a, you know, assuming that he was still going to be on the roster next season. There wasn't very much of like hinting that he's going to get moved or anything. Not, and I'm not saying that that changes my thinking because I think the expectation by a lot of people um, is that that's the guy 
that gets moved. If anything happens this off season, it's a, a Duncan trade. And so I don't think that what he said makes me think less of that uh, concept or anything like that, but it's just him being a pros pro, right. And being like, no, this guy is still a hell of a shooter. Uh, he can st- be even better, right? Like they're always looking at internal improvement and he, he still loves the game, man. Like I, that's the the one huge takeaway, right? Like he's still really invested all, in all this, even though, you know, um, he has all his other guys now that, that he believes in as far as like in the front office. Um, you could tell by the way he talks about guys internal improvement and specific things that he wants guys to get better at. You could tell it's well thought out. Um, you could tell he just spends a lot of time thinking and watching about basketball. And the, the way that he talks about it still like, yo, me and Alonzo, We'll just watch games there and without even talking to each other, just very serious, just taking I notes. It. I thought that was hilarious uh, when he said, uh, I don't have the quote in front of me, but he's like, oh, that the that dragon is still in me from that loss. Yeah. <laughs> that one was great because it's like he is still suffering with the losses. And I get it. He's a president and he has, you know, um, he <laughs> he has he's really invested in the heat. So, of course, it's going to he's going to feel it. But it, it's so funny because like uh, as as people who grew up as Heat fans, you know, we kind of sort of age out of that living and dying with, with the games and stuff. And like, look at this man with all the age and experience he's had with basketball, knowing that it's just a game that knows the business of it front to back is still all the way invested in the game and winning. Like the guy is just he still has that competitive edge and he loves the game so much. So it's always fun to hear him talk. And uh, it was cool just to see a. Uh, living legend in person. Maybe next time uh, I'll be able to hold him accountable, but uh, we all know that's not going to happen. I thought it was a great press conference. I'm glad y'all got to uh, be there in attendance. Um, definitely cool. Uh, we need you I, out there I, next time. I felt, I felt cool being on the zoom call. Like that's how cool it's like six, dire- six degrees of separation from Pat Riley. You never know what angles that they come from. It's funny though. You listen back to our preview pod. We kind of, we hit on a lot of stuff, y'all, uh, that, that kind of came up in that presser, not to uh, to brush our shoulders off and give ourselves credit. Anyway, thank you for joining us. We unpacked a ton on this podcast related to the Pat Riley presser. Um, find us on uh, wherever you download your podcast. We will be back with you the entire week as the NBA finals unfolds, talking about how it relates to the heat, maybe how it doesn't, and then get you ready for the NBA draft later this month. Thanks for joining us.